Hello, this is Roy Tomalina with BMX. And during this short video, I'll show you how to calibrate a temperature loop using a BMX MC6 and a BMX FB150 dry block. We'll be doing this as an automatic calibration, calibrating this temperature element and this temperature transmitter. Continuing doing an automatic calibration, we need to make the connections. So let's break this down. We'll start off with our temperature element that we're plugging into our temperature source. That connects to our temperature transmitter. The transmitter converts this temperature into a milliamp output. The calibrator then measures that milliamp output and at the same time we can provide a 24 volt loop power back to power up the transmitter. The dry block itself tells us what temperature that it's at. If we need, we can have a more accurate sensor. In this case, we put in a, a high accuracy temperature reference probe and we've got that plugged into the front of the dry block. Now, if your temperature block model doesn't include this port, you can connect this reference probe right to your MC6 here. Now to connect the MC6 to the FB150 dry block, we take a USB cable. The dry block takes a serial cable, so in between we simply have an adapter to adapt USB to serial. We have our connections made, it's time to take the next step. Documenting calibrator. You see the list of what you have due for the day or maybe what's due for your shift. In this case I have one. It's position TT124. Just before this I brought it over using CMX, our calibration software, so everything was loaded up with all the critical details. As a technician I simply touch on the instrument. This gives me a rundown of what I'm doing. It tells me what the instrument name is. It tells me what the function is. It tells me what the input and output parameters are. And it even tells me where to plug in. Maybe I'm a new technician and I haven't used this a lot. So this tells me for my input, I need to connect my USB. You can see it in green right here. USB cable connecting me over here to my temperature source. And the output of the transmitter is right here. And that tells me to hook up right here. So this will measure the milliamps and provide loop power. We have a three up test strategy and our input is zero to 100 C and the output is four to 20 milliamps. So now it's time to get started. I'm gonna hit the check mark and then all we do is hit the start button. It's that easy. We've reached our first test point. You can see a countdown happening right now. We had a 10 second delay set up. So once it reaches that test point, it will count down to whatever delay we've set. So it's just finished counting down our delay. It grabbed the test point. You see that represented as a green circle. Our next test point is right here. So on the bottom right, it'll show you where you're going. And that says we are heading to 50 degrees C and we're expecting 12 milliamps out. While this is increasing in temperature, let me explain what's going on with the screen here. On the top left, you have the input. It tells us that we're hooked up to a temperature source. It tells us we're hooked up to an FB150R. The R means that we have a reference probe attachment right here on the front. And it's also in degree C. Now the top right is the output, so that's where we're measuring milliamps and it tells us that the supply is on. The next section down is the graph. So the graph is where are we on this calculation? So the middle line is our zero. If there's no error, our test points will be across that all the way. The blue dotted lines above and below our zero represent our tolerance. So our test points can be within the blue lines anywhere down the graph and still pass. We're getting a live reading of error and it takes a while as we're heating up, there's a little bit of a delay from our temperature probe and that's why we have a settling delay at the end anyway. At the bottom we have a pause button so we could pause our calibration if we needed to for some reason. So at this point now we just wait for it to hit 50 degrees C and grab our second test point. 
We've reached our second test point. Now it's counting down from 10 seconds. You can see this here. Then it will grab that test point and then start heating up to the final test point. There we can see it's a little bit above the zero. We can see the error right now. And if we look at our serial to USB adapter, we can see that it's actually communicating. One is a send or transmit and one is the receive. So now we'll hit 100 degrees C and finish our final test point. We've reached our final test point. We have our 10 second countdown before it actually captures the result. Did it pass or did it fail? So it will always tell you whether it passes or whether it fails. We get to see our error. It was 0.333% of span. 0.5% of span was our tolerance that we decided upon before we even started. So this tells us a summary of what's going on. If I hit the down arrow, yeah, we then put in who did the calibration and any calibration notes. We get a visual representation of the graph of the test we just did. Hit down one more time and we get to see all of the raw data. To save it, we just press the disk and save it as found. Hit check. Now at this point our as found is done. If we decided that for some reason we wanted to do a trim, we could do that. We just press this upper left hand button and start communicator. We could calibrate this as a heart transmitter. If it were a foundation field bus transmitter or even a profi bus transmitter, we could do all three types. So now you know how to do an automatic calibration of a temperature loop using an MC6 calibrator and an FB150 temperature block. In this case, our next step would be to take these results and unload them into our CMX calibration software. Again, through this entire process, we've never picked up a pen, we've never picked up a piece of paper. So this is completely paperless automatic calibration with the push of one button. Now, if your temperature block doesn't happen to be green, we do support a good number of temperature blocks out there. So we'd like to thank you for watching and check out our other calibration videos.